All right, moving on to R3. Uh, this is something that I sponsored. I brought up in my legislative update uh, last week, wanting just uh, the public to be able to get uh, caught up as to the transition of Shasta County uh, not no longer being the lead of the COC. So I asked uh, Director Laura Birch to come up and make a presentation just about outstanding items and maybe just give some clarification to the process that's unfolded over time and just uh, catch everybody up. So thank you, Ms. Birch, for coming on up. Good morning, Chair Cry and members of the board. Laura Birch, Health and Human Services Agency Director. Okay. Thank you for the opportunity to provide an update on the status of Shasta County's departure from the NorCal Continuum of Care um, as the lead agency, a transition initiated um, last summer. Today, I'll provide some background on this transition, detail our current role in the COC, and discuss any remaining costs that are still unreimbursed. Last summer, Shasta County made the decision to depart from its role as the lead agency within the NorCal COC. This decision was made in the interest of aligning our county resources more effectively with the needs of our community and improving our ability to address homelessness and housing instability. <coughs> We have stepped down from our role as the lead agency. Um, while we have stepped down in our role as a lead agency, Shasta County continues to play an active role within the COC. We remain a vital partner in the collaborative efforts to address homelessness and housing issues in the region. Our involvement includes participation in planning, coordination, and decision making. Regarding costs associated with our departure from the NorCal COC as the lead agency, I'm pleased to report that the majority of expenses have been reimbursed. However, there may be some remaining costs that are still unreimbursed. We are diligently working to address any outstanding financial obligations and ensure that all expenditures are accounted for and properly documented. All right, the NorCal um, Homeless Continuum of Care coordinates the implementation of housing and service system that meets the needs of persons experiencing homelessness in the region. The COC geographic area includes Del Norte, Lassen, Modoc, Plumas, Shasta, Sierra, and Siskiyou counties. There is one executive board who has decision-making authority and considers the recommendations of the advisory boards. Each county has a local advisory board with the exception of Plumas and Sierra, which are combined. Currently, there are approximately 18 voting members on the Shasta Advisory Board from various nonprofits, SCOE, HHSA, um, the City of Reading, and community members. HUD describes the COC Board as the collective of individuals designated to provide oversight and governance on behalf of the COC. The COC Board's responsibilities are defined by the COC and must be described in the COC's governance charter. The COC board must be representative of the relevant organizations and of projects serving homeless populations and subpopulations within the COC's geographic area. The COC board must also include at least one homeless or formerly homeless individual. The NorCal COC governance charter states that the COC executive board is the decision-making body for the COC members um, of the board, including local officials, service provider agencies, formerly homeless individuals, and advocates. The executive board is comprised of seven voting members, one representing and elected by each of the advisory boards in the COC region. One of the responsibilities of the executive board is to annually designate an entity to serve as the collaborative applicant for the NorCal COC. For the past seven years, the County of Shasta was a collaborative applicant or otherwise known as the lead agency. One important revision from the original um, 2019 governance charter that I was responsible for um, uh, working on with the consultant that we had at the time was the removal of one eligibility criteria for the executive board membership and that was that um, to be on the executive board, you had to have the capacity to obligate your county to the decisions of the COC. Now, the governance charter is updated annually, so um, the membership can determine to add or remove anything um, from the governance charter, but that was an important factor in 2019 when we developed our first charter um, to include those that had the financial responsibility to be able to obligate their county. Um, the governance charter um, for the NorCal COC 
can now be found on the City of Reading website and contains the guidelines for which the COC operates. It also describes the roles of the Executive Board, the Advisory Boards, and the Designated Collaborative Applicant or Lead Agency. The Governance Charter, as I stated, is annually updated. This presentation will now cover the period of transition from Shasta County as a lead agency for the NorCal COC to the City of Reading. Who can run a COC? That's something that's come up a few times. Uh, who can run a COC is cities, counties, and in this case we have seven um, counties in the NorCal COC. Either one of them could have been running the COC. Um, at one time we had a consultant that was paid for um, by the City of Reading and Shasta County. Um, and um, you could also have a nonprofit. You could actually have the COC board members um, run the COC and be responsible for the administrative tasks, or you could have a nonprofit. Shasta County's lead agency designation for the NorCal COC began in 2018. Prior to that, a consultant was paid by the City of Reading and Shasta County to complete the <coughs> annual collaborative application apply for funding, complete administrative tasks on behalf of the COC, and provide guidance to the members. Fast forward. In December 2022, the Housing and Community Action Agency director departed. Shasta County Health and Community Action Agency was the appointed lead agency, leaving a void for many months as the county worked to determine um, that a temporary consolidation of Shasta County um, Health and uh, or, uh, Housing and Community Action to Health and Human Services would provide the best continuity and stability for that department as well as for the COC. On April 27, 2023, the Shasta County Board of Supervisors voted unanimously to consolidate Shasta County Housing and Community Action under Health and Human Services. This consolidation resulted in HHSA absorbing all the responsibilities fulfilled by Housing and Community Action as the NorCal Continuum of Care lead agency, including HMIS and Coordinated Entry Administration. During this consolidation, HHSA met with the CAO with and with HUD to discuss the option of transition. Additionally, the governance charter did not address the unique issue of the county's consolidation and how the lead agency responsibilities would transition. Therefore, HHSA reached out to HUD in order to receive technical assistance and recommended language to update the governance charter, which was brought before the advisory boards and the executive board for approval. On June 1st, at a special meeting, HHSA was appointed the lead agency by the NorCal COC, um, of the NorCal COC by the executive board, which allowed HHSA to provide continued administrative support for the COC, HMIS, and coordinated entry systems. In in the prior months leading up to this appointment, discussions were held with the CAO's office and a decision was made that Shasta County would terminate our contracts with the City of Reading and each respective COC county as the lead agency. The increasing costs associated with running the COC and the related liability were among the top reasons for the departure. On June 21st, we notified each county that we were terminating our lead agency agreements effective August 21st. However, we continued to operate HMIS and provide training to the United Way through the end of the year to December 31st. Additionally, we continued to provide services under the HUD Partners 2 Agreement for rental subsidies and supportive services for the mentally ill, unsheltered population. We assisted in the submission of the HUD collaborative application submitted on September 28, 2023. We attended multiple meetings and provided guidance, supporting documentation, and technical assistance to the City of Reading, the Executive Board, and the Advisory Boards as requested. <coughs> we also worked closely with Cal ICH, the City of Reading, and the COC Executive Board Chair to transition over $4 million in funding from multiple grants in various life stages and work to close out and meet HUD performance reporting requirements for many others. We also had to untangle multiple contracts with counties and nonprofits and the City of Reading. Um, needless to say, we were extraordinarily busy. On July 20th, the Executive Board voted to approve the City of Reading as the new lead agency subject to City Council approval, which was received on August 15th for the interim period of two years. 
On July 31st, the Executive Board approved the United Way to serve as the HMIS and Coordinated Entry Administrator beginning January 1st, 2024. Though the transition was not without its trials, administration of both the COC, HMIS, and Coordinated Entry are now complete. Shasta County continues to provide services under the HUD Partners 2 Agreement for rental subsidies and supportive services until another entity applies through the collaborative application process. Shasta County continues to serve on the advisory board as a voting member. Um, staff attend the coordinated entry meetings to assist clients who are on the coordinated entry list and will continue to participate in the point in time count. It is important to note that Shasta County will continue to have runoff costs for the next two fiscal years. These costs are associated with cost plan charges incurred during fiscal years 21, 22, 22, 23, and 23, 24. As we incur cost plan charges in arrears uh, for services such as county council reviewing contracts, uh, support services, and the auditors, it is unknown at this time how much these costs will be However, in 23-24, the cost will exceed Justin County cost plan charges $181,000. Components of uh, the COC funding that I wanted to share with you today, because this is the largest um, funding source for the COC, um, are the HAP grants. Uh, and I'm gonna pro provide a little context. Um, with what these are, HAP is the Homeless Housing Assistance and Prevention Grants, which play a crucial role in our efforts to address homelessness. HAP um, 1 through 5 grants encompass various funding streams aimed at preventing and addressing homelessness, providing emergency housing assistance, and supporting housing stability initiatives. Within these grants, there is a differentiation between the COC allocation and the county's allocation. The COC allocation is distributed by the COC's lead agency to support regional homelessness initiatives within the counties, while the county's allocation is used to fund local programs and services. The COC is primarily funded through the Housing, Homeless, and Assistance Program grants known as HAP 1, 2, 3, 4, and soon to be 5. HAP 1 total costs to the COC um, or funding to the COC is 1.5 million, of which 906,000 is designated for Shasta County COC recipients. And for HAP1, those recipients were CalWORKS, Hill Country, Nation's Finest, and VHDC. Shasta County's allocation was 902,000. <coughs> HAP2 funding um, for the COC was $751,000, of which $373,000 is, des um, is designated for Shasta County recipients. Those recipients were Hill Country, FaithWorks, Ready for Life, Shasta Community Health Center. The Shasta County allocation portion was $412,000. HAP3 total funding for the COC was $2,019,000, of which $1.2 was designated, oh, is designated for Shasta County COC recipients, um, City of Reading, uh, FaithWorks, Lutheran Social Services, Pathways to Housing, Ready for Life, Shasta Community Health Center. Shasta County's allocation is $1.1 million. HAP4 funding, total funding, is $2.4 million, of which $1 million is designated for Shasta County COC recipients Notice of funding availability will go out at the end of this month. Shasta County's allocation is $995,000. The City of Reading is currently underwriting the HAP 3 and 4 contracts for each county to receive their allotted county grant portion. HAP 5 total funding for the COC is $3.6 million, of which $1.4 is designated for Shasta County COC recipients. Shasta County's allocation is $1.3 million. So total regional HAP funding for the seven county region um, consists of $10,427,149 from 2020 to current. The total COC Shasta County designated funding for all HAP grants is $5,034,425. 
the total Shasta County allocation funding for all HAP grants is $4,866,159 with a net total after the carve-outs for City of Reading Administration, HMIS, and joint project costs of $4,424,523. According to budgets received from the City of Reading, the administrative cost to cover the two-year commitment for the City of Reading is $549,384. The City of Reading will utilize HAP funds to cover the cost of HMIS and coordinated entry for the United Way for a total of eight hundred in $17,419 for two years. And we'll also pay a consultant to complete the annual collaborative application for a total of $78,165. The two-year COC budget is $1.8 million, just shy of 1.9, with a budget shortfall of $760,000. The administrative funding for the City of Reading will be covered by the funding from COC from the COC and counties each have three and four seven percent admin and joint project carve outs. For H HAP five, this includes a one percent contribution for HMIS from the Shasta County allocation. For Shasta County specifically, from our county allocations, this totals four hundred and six thousand five hundred and ninety four dollars for the city of Reading and HMIS. Needless to say, operating a geographically large seven-county COC is costly and administratively labor-intensive and not without liability. Contributing factors to homelessness. Homelessness is a complex issue um, with various contributing factors. Um, poverty remains a significant factor in homelessness. Individuals and families who struggle with poverty often find it difficult to secure stable housing due to financial constraints. Lack of affordable housing, uh, the scarcity of affordable housing exacerbates homelessness. High rental costs, limited availability, and housing market dynamics make it challenging for low-income individuals to find suitable places to live. Psychiatric issues, substance use disorders, trauma and abuse, unemployment and low wages, family violence, and education level, all are contributing factors. By self-report, individuals surveyed during the 2022 pit count cited unemployment, drug abuse, and eviction as the top reasons for being homeless. Family breakup, mental health, and sudden loss of income were also contributing factors. Of note, 56.39% of the people um, surveyed stated that they had lived in our county homeless for over 10 years. Barriers to housing in Shasta County include that the median um, rent for an apartment in Shasta County is $1,211, um, and there are 90 available rental units. Section 8 um, uh, average rent is $906,000. Um, currently, I forget how many vouchers we have available. Christy, do you know? Maybe a couple hundred vouchers. Yes. So couple hundred vouchers remaining. Um, $2,195 is the median rental cost for a home in Shasta County, and as of today, there are 82 homes available for rent. $98,000 is the minimum qualifying income to purchase a home in Shasta County. The median house price in Shasta County is $3,000, um, or $366,500, and the median household income is $68,347 from the census 2022 quick facts. Uh, Shasta County's population is 180,366 um, and housing units as of July 1st, 2022 are 80,095. Although we have transitioned away from our role as the lead agency, Shasta County retains important responsibilities within the COC. These include active participation in decision-making processes, collaboration with stakeholders, and ongoing support for initiatives aimed at addressing homelessness and housing instability. Though Shasta County is no longer the lead agency, we will continue to partner with the COC to address the needs of the homeless population. It's a challenge that demands our urgent attention and concerted action. As stewards of our community, we have a responsibility to address the needs of the homeless population effectively. However, this is a task that no single entity can tackle alone, 
It requires a unified effort, a collaborative approach that brings together local governments, entities, and organizations in a shared commitment to making a difference. By working together, we can leverage our collective resources, expertise, influence, and influence to achieve far greater impact than any one of us could achieve on our own. Together, we can pool our resources, share best practices, and coordinate our efforts to ensure that every dollar spent is used wisely and efficiently. But collaboration is more than just about maximizing resources. It's also about ensuring that those resources are well used to achieve the best possible outcomes for our community. We must be strategic and deliberative in our approach, focusing on evidence-based solutions that address the root causes of homelessness and promote long-term stability. This means investing in programs and initiatives that provide not just temporary relief, but also pathways to permanent housing, employment, and support services. It means prioritizing prevention and early intervention to keep individuals and families from falling into homelessness in the first place. And it means fostering a culture of accountability and transparency, where our actions are guided by data and driven by results. As we move forward in our efforts to address homelessness, let us remember that our success will ultimately be measured not by the number of dollars spent or programs implemented, but by the tangible impact that we have on the lives of those we serve. Let us commit ourselves to working collaboratively, tirelessly, and compassionately to ensure that every member of our community has a safe place to call home. Thank you for your, your attention, your dedication, and your unwavering commitment to the well-being of our community. Thank you. Is there any supervisors that have some questions uh, for Laura Birch? I can go first. Okay, so I brought this up again because I, I just think it's, uh, it's one of the things that I ran on was most important to me, spent time in Mercy Canyon, and I think a lot of these issues uh, are not solvable, but we can definitely mitigate uh, some of the money spent. And, and I, I'm going to bounce around a little bit here, Laura, just from public comment, but I, had, I did have a question. Did you say in, in that presentation that there was 50-some percent, a little over 50 percent of people that were, were uh, interviewed or were polled had been homeless in Shasta County for over 10 years? 56. 56 percent yeah and that's um, that's that's extremely troubling to me with the amount of money we're spending to, for people to be on the streets that long now I will say there's some people that choose to be they, they choose to want to camp and that's a lifestyle they have and I'm absolutely against uh, people's private property being camped on so okay um, in 2019 in the governance charter um, you made that change what was the what was the purpose behind making that change to the governance charter that uh, for representation for the lead agency or for the county? We didn't make the change. That was the beginning of the governance charter. Um, we were working with a consultant at the okay. time and it was approved in January, I believe, of 2019. And the purpose was so that um, those who were um, uh, responsible for the county funding um, had the capacity and um, the basically the authority to obligate that funding. So um, I think the reason why that's important today is that um, of the HAP funding, um, three, four, and five, there are costs from the county grant portion that um, we will have as carve-outs that we don't have um, authority to not contribute. Like we don't have a say over We don't have that. a say. No. Correct. And then uh, how many times is the charter um, been changed, revised, edited in the last couple of years. Do you I know that? No, um, I have a copy of I mean, from, um, the from, current, what I... from the current governance charter. Um, just all I know is from the current governance charter that was approved on six one twenty three, that it was amended um, one two three four times since August of twenty three. So I don't, I, and I don't know what those amendments are. I don't have a red line. I don't know what those changes included. Okay. So when we talk about the, the runout cost, the $181,000, uh, was that for 23, 24, or was that 24, 25? So um, that is currently this year, 23, 24, um, and that's for cost plan charges. But, you know, we also incurred staffing costs from uh, July until we transitioned HMIS and coordinated entry over. 
um, in on January 1st, and Christy has that information as far as what our costs are for staffing, total costs for staffing, that do not include the 181000 That's significantly more. Yeah, so staff costs aside, <clears throat> the, uh -huh. well, or, or included either way, that's all because we were the lead agency and this is the runout. So the city of Reading, who's currently the lead agency, will have runout costs whenever they choose to step away as, as well, correct? I, mean, I, I don't know how their cost plan charges work. Um, ours are in arrears by two years. So, um, you know, if, if theirs work the same way that ours do, then... So who's the analyst that's assigned to that? Because I want to know uh, where does that, where's that money going to come from? And then is there opportunity to recoup that, or how do we get that back? Is it general fund money? Is, I would, is this I would be assume, the, yes, the gift that keeps on giving? We're going we're gonna to mm -hmm. keep continuing to spend on this? Yeah. And, there, and uh, uh, CEO Rickard, is there a way that you're able to uh, track down if there's a way that that can be recruit, recouped since we were the lead agency? And the, these are still uh, costs that the county's incurring. I, I will sit down and work with County Council and Laura Birch to examine the, the costs and come back at a later date with a report. Okay. Uh, one of the, I, 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 have, I just have one more question, because, and, and I appreciate the speakers, and, and again, this is, this is solely about just getting the conversation to just help people. I mean, uh, having Jerry and Skippy come up and some of the things that we've dealt with here at the county as we talk about how many people are in the county, this just solely comes from wanting to get people the best help we can most effectively um, you know so in, in your letter and I do appreciate you guys giving us a copy I you know I highlighted it and I, just because I wanted to make sure I'm sure but the word collaborative is in there seven times seven times and I I love collaboration I think the best the best uh, opportunities are people that collaborate that that look at a beach ball because many people look at a beach ball and say it's got a red, white, and blue panel, and we're, I'm confident of that. But on your side of the beach ball, it may be orange, yellow, and purple. So we're both looking at a beach ball. We're both absolutely certain what's on it. But if you spin it, then you get a different perspective. And I would ask the uh, advisory committee to really be truly collaborative and let the county have a seat at that executive board collaboratively because um, I, I think that's critical when you're talking about uh, bringing the county into that conversation of, of collaboration. I mean, that, that's, that's all I want. I, I just want everybody, because the at-home program, and I'm sorry, I'm looking at you three, but you three you know, spoke. So um, the at-home program initially, I think, was phenomenal. And I still think there are some things that are phenomenal about it. But it was like politics were completely out of it because it, was, it wasn't a brown app thing. It was elected sitting in a room saying, how are we going to row together? It was about policy. It was about getting people off the streets. It was about helping people. And once it became a brown app thing and it became a public thing, then it all became about politics. And I see people, uh, I see money, you know, going away and services not being executed correctly because people's politics get them. And I just don't, I just don't care about that. I just care about getting people the help that need it. So, I appreciate you guys coming out, and I didn't want to say anything while you were speaking, so that's why I'm taking that time to discuss it now. Supervisor Jones. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, Director Birch, just a quick question, um, just to kind of put things in perspective a little bit. Um, uh, what is the, the total budget for the COC, and then in comparison to the budget for the county in, in some of the programs that we do, just just for the public? Uh, I mean, it's a, it's a massive difference, but... Um, the COC's budget and how much money is there and what it can affect for change compared to um, what the county does. So are you talking about our budget as a whole because the budget we just created is about $300 million? And, and how much of that do you think is directed at programs for people experiencing or about to experience homelessness? Well, probably, you know, much of our mental health programs, our um, economic mobility programs that provide um, food and um, cash payments uh, to help stabilize families, social services, um, many aspects of our social services, so a lot of it, actually. And then we have multiple housing programs as well. So uh, the lion's share of $300 million we also have prevention, so public health does prevention activities, um, which I'm sure we'd, we could correlate that also to the prevention activities to keep people 
from becoming homeless as well. And, and what's the average amount that the COC gets each year as an average? Do you have that? Oh, oh that um, Shasta County receives? Yeah. From HF? Oh. I would say, I mean, it's increased over years, but um, the average um, is about 1.1 1 .1 million. And, and the total for COC is up to two and a half million or something of that nature? Um, it, HAP 5 will be 3.6, um, HAP 4 was 2.4, HAP 3 was 2. And is that the total funding for the COC? Do they get it? Yeah, but they, um, no, but what they have to do though when, when we talk about COC funding, they um, designate portions of that funding to the other counties as well. So as far as Shasta County funding um, from the COC, we're talking 1.4 million, 1 million, 1.2 million. And then my, my, I guess my final question is, um, obviously for us for a seven year period, we were the lead agency. We were experiencing um, uh, financial costs that exceeded what we were getting mm -hmm. uh, for administration. Um, what has the city of Reading done to solve that problem? And, and when, when we had excesses, was that a general fund cost or where was that coming from? So um, at the time, so one thing that's really important to note, I previously was the um, Housing and Community Program uh, or Director um, and that was back in 2018, 2019. And during that time, um, the COC was much smaller in grants so I think the largest grant we had at the time was the HEAP grant, and I think that for the total region was a $7 million grant, and maybe $2 million of it came to our region. Um, so a lot has changed over that time. When I was not the housing director, more grants came in. Um, the state is utilizing the COCs as the funding, um, like the open door to uh, disseminate the funding. Um, it made it easier for the states and um, gave more um, control to the COC um, and to the partners in the region who are nonprofits and other entities. Um, so, uh, I, what, what exactly was? Well, I mean, we had we had a certain amount of money we received for the administration being the lead agency. Yeah. So that, that, that was HUD, yeah. We received HUD funding um, from the HUD grants. So we received like thirty nine thousand dollars to um, administer HMIS, sixty one thousand dollars to administer coordinated entry. We received I, I forget how much the planning grant was. It might have been about thirty nine thousand dollars. So um, we didn't receive a whole lot. To administer the COC, we did receive contributions from the City of Reading for twenty thousand dollars a year, each year, um, to assist. We received um, contributions from the counties in the amount of it depended upon the county. So the very small counties contributed fifteen hundred for the entire year um, for our assistance, and um, the most being I think seventy five hundred for the larger of the six counties. And so the extra cost to Shasta County would have been in the way of uh, county council costs and so oh, it, yeah. and, and various other departments would be sharing. Yeah, operational costs. costs. You know, we had, we had a building we had to pay for and, you know, you couldn't have the housing authority pay for all of that and community action agency pay for all of those costs. What is your estimation that we're going to be saving uh, without being the lead agency? Do you have a, a rough idea that what kind of general cost that that ultimately was costing us? Well, I would say just looking at this year alone, which only covers half of the staffing, that's about um, $500,000 and then run out costs of 181000 So upwards of about $600,000 a year. All right, thank you, Director Burke. So I have, I have uh, one other question, and, uh, and and I guess this is more for people that are with the COC that are here. I, I would really, and I know, and, and Laura, correct me if I'm wrong, but one of the issues that we had, and again, this isn't uh, trying to create divide, but one of the, one of the rubs was oftentimes when we said, and when I say we, the county, you and your team said the enormous amount of cost this was, uh, the county was asked to provide um, a breakdown, right, a spreadsheet, and it was like, if you do that, I remember you saying it would take you months to be able to 
put all that into a spreadsheet and that would just cost that much more time and fewer people would be getting helped. So the, the, my question now is obviously that there's a very big realization with the city of Reading and the COC that it does truly cost a lot more mm -hmm. than they anticipated. So do you think for this 181,000 and for some of the runout costs of staff, um, could we put something together? But I would ask, I'd, I'd probably go to the advisory committee's next meeting or the executive meeting, because if we spent that time from a collaborative standpoint, I'd like to see if there's a path to get some of that back, because that is money we are spending on behalf of running the COC, and, and I think there's nothing more collaborative than just being made whole. Maybe not entirely, but is that something your staff could put together in a reasonably timely manner without it being a crushing amount of time to, yeah. I don't want to say justify, but just to say, hey, here's what the 181000 for the runout costs were, yeah. and then here's what some staff time was. Well, yeah, I have, How long would that take? I have for this year. Well, this would be like right away I'd have that information okay. because cost plan charges are from prior two years ago. We, we have it now. So I know what those are, the 181000 I know what that is. Um, as far as staff time, because we um, stopped doing um, – the majority of those activities as of December 31st, I have that staff time already um, determined. So I have that information. What I don't have is, and actually I do have cost plan charges for the new budget that's coming up because we just did our budget. So those cost plan charges for two years ago, I have that in the 24-25. So it's, that's easy to estimate. It would only be the cost plan charges, but the year after that, I don't have that information because it's not yet determined what those will be. Okay. And one thing I wanted to just clarify, you said that it would take us many months to create all this information. I think I think what happened, and it was a real rub for everybody, and I understand, was um, the challenge of um, providing accurate documentation with regards to um, financials. Uh, that was because, and I mean, I this can't be stressed enough, uh, when we were transitioning, we were transitioning into um, a department that wasn't our department. We didn't have the historical background. Uh, I had not been in there for many years um, as the director. Um, we didn't we didn't participate in the determination of the contracts or any of the funding applications, and much of that information was no longer available. So, and a lot of staff were no longer um, employed. So we were scrambling uh, to try to come up with those records. We could pull anything out of our um, One Solution uh, doc, uh, application, which is our accounting software, but there wasn't the detail that would say, this is specifically this, this is specifically this, because there was a combination of um, cost plans um, in, in two cost plan units um, together and trying to disseminate or understand who was what. We didn't know. Okay. So that was the challenge. No, I, I really appreciate it. And I know that yesterday we did talk about uh, with the advisory board maybe going before the COC and then inviting them in in the next uh, few weeks to you know build on this. Because I think this is the most pressing, one of the two most pressing issues we have in the county is uh, the unsheltered uh, homeless population, mental health, drug addicted, et cetera. So. One thing I would like to say is that I do believe that the COC um, now, it's been a bumpy ride, like I said, it wasn't without its trials. Um, and sometimes, you know, weeping and gnashing of teeth um, to get it where it is right now. I think they're doing an excellent job. Um, like I stated, I think that running a seven county continuum is extremely labor intensive and costly, something that we could no longer um, do. <laughs> And um, I do appreciate their efforts. I do see that it appears to be very well organized. Um, and also United Way is, a, appears to be doing a fantastic job as well. So I do want to say that. That's great. Okay. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, we are gonna move on to, yes, thank you. We're gonna move on to R4, receive a legislative update. And